Hi, I'm Tara Cordy Simpson, and welcome to the Biology 12 Unit A video on the cell theory and different parts of the cell. What are the key ideas we're going to talk about during this video? The first one, oh, sorry, let me just go back and grab my pen here. The first thing we're going to talk about is how was the cell discovered? The second thing that we're going to learn a little bit about, which will probably be review for you, is the cell theory. And the third thing we're going to be talking about is prokaryotic cells versus eukaryotic cells. Now, there is some important vocabulary that you need to understand for this video, so we're just going to go over those words to get started with. So the first important word that I want to go over with you is organelle. Organelle is a structure within the cell that carries out a specific function or job. Now, organelle is very easy to confuse with organism. Organism is an individual living thing made up of one or more cells. So an organism can be a bacteria cell or a bacteria, or it could be a human being, just like you and me. A membrane is a flexible sheet-like structure that acts as a boundary or a partition within an organism or a cell. Now further along in the video, we're going to be talking about the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. But I'll just quickly review them for you here. A prokaryotic cell that does not contain membrane-bound organelles, and a eukaryotic cell does contain membrane-bound organelles, such as a nucleus or a mitochondria. And the final word I want to go over with you today is compartmentalization. Sorry about that. To separate into parts. Okay, let's begin with the history. Now, cytology is the study of cells. Remember, ology always means the study of. When the microscope was invented in the early 1700s, that was the key to discovering cells. The scientists were able to view all objects in much more detail. With the invention of the microscope, the discovery and the study of cells began. As the microscopes improved, more parts of the cell could be viewed. In the 1830s, two German biologists came to the same conclusion, even though neither of them were working with one another. They were working completely independently in different laboratories. The idea that they came up with was that all organisms they studied under the microscope were composed of cells. This idea was transformed into a general statement for the cell theory. The cell is the building block of organisms, one of the main ideas of the cell theory. Rudolf Virchow was a German doctor, biologist, anthropologist, and pathologist. He is credited in history with determining that cells come from pre-existing cells. That was his main contribution to the scientific community. However, some believe that Virchow may have originally taken this cell theory idea from another scientist, Robert Remack, but taken credit that it was his own work. In summary, the two main ideas of the cell theory are the cell is the building block of organisms, and number two, cells come from pre-existing cells. Okay, now moving on to our third key idea, prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells. As more and more cells were discovered, the scientists needed a way to sort all the cells. So they created a classification system based on how complex the cell was. Simple cells with no membrane-bound organelles were called prokaryotic. Complex cells with membrane-bound organelles were called eukaryotic. Examples of membrane-bound structures found in the eukaryotic cell is the nucleus, mitochondria, and the chloroplast. Wait a minute. 
In past science courses, you learned that the nucleus is the control center for the cell and contains all the DNA, also known as the genetic material. If prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, then what controls the prokaryotic cell? If prokaryotic cells do not have any DNA, because they don't have a nucleus, how is the genetic code passed on to the next cell when one prokaryotic cell divides into two prokaryotic cells? Hmm. The prokaryotic cells actually still do contain DNA. The DNA can still provide commands to the rest of the cell. However, the DNA is not gathered together inside of a membrane, such as a nucleus. It can float around and move throughout the cell in a prokaryotic cell. When viewing cells under a microscope, a prokaryotic cell can be identified because it does not have any visible nucleus. When viewing eukaryotic cells under the microscope, the nucleus is one of the most vis visible things you will be able to see. So bacteria is an example of a prokaryotic cell. And some examples of eukaryotic cells is the animal cell, of course what we're made of, plant cells, as well as fungus cells. Prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells. So if you had to choose to be either a prokaryotic or a eukaryotic cell, what would you choose? Is there any advantage to being either prokaryotic or eukaryotic? Hmm. Yes, there is an advantage to being a eukaryotic cell, and the advantage is compartmentalization. In eukaryotic cells, all membrane-bound organelles provide many areas or spaces for chemical reactions and processes to occur without interfering with other things happening in the cell. This means that many chemical reactions and processes can be carried out simultaneously in the eukaryotic cell. Sounds pretty efficient, eh? This compartmentalization also allows eukaryotic cells to be more diversified, meaning many different types of cells such as muscle cells and red blood cells. Compartmentalization also allows eukaryotic cells to specialize in their function or job, such as the very important function of carrying oxygen in the bloodstream. Now for a quick review of our key ideas as we come to the end of the video. The invention of the microscopes led to the discovery of the cells. The two main ideas of the cell theory are, number one, the cell is the building block of organisms, meaning to create an organism, in other words, a living thing, you need one or more cells. And number two, cells come from pre-existing cells, meaning that one cell divides into two cells. And finally, due to compartmentalization, uh, eukaryotic cells are more efficient, diverse, and specialized than prokaryotic cells. So that's the discovery of cells, the cell theory, and prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells. Thanks for watching.